Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the lecture number 25 of the course Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so, today we will start module 9, uh, which is about happiness activities first part. Uh, module 10 will be happiness activities part 2. So, uh, today we will talk about the concept of gratitude. How can we cultivate happiness uh, uh, pra by practicing uh, gratitude. So, before we talk about today's lecture, uh, let us have a brief recap of the last lecture or kind of an overview of the last module, because this module is connected to the last module. So, in the last lecture or in the last module, uh, we tried to address one important question uh, that can we increase our experiences of happiness. So, that was the question that we were addressing uh, in the last module. Uh, in that context, we try to understand, you know, there are some inherent barriers in increasing our happiness level uh, in terms of factors such as uh, our genetic influences uh, and hedonic adaptation to life circumstances. So, whatever changes happens, we get generally adapted to them and we return to our baseline level of happiness. Uh, then we have discussed a model called uh, sustainable happiness model, where we try to disc uh, understand that you know uh, that there are three important determinants of three important determinants of happiness. There are one is genetics, second is life circumstances, and third is intentional activities. So in that context, we discussed that you know um, as uh, genetics is kind of you know. Uh, the influences of genes set certain limits to our experiences, including happiness and emotions, and it kinds of creates a baseline level. Life circumstances are also kind of uh, stable, stable aspects or facts of our life, uh, uh, which also don't contribute much to our happiness level, primarily because we get ad adapted to them. Then we discuss that intentional activities are third set of factors, uh, which provides ample avenues for you know increasing or kind of exploring our happiness or you know, or pursuing our sense of happiness. So, in that context we have discussed intentional activities are basically uh, those activities which are conscious effortful uh, which we do or which we kind of or our thought thought processes it may include both actions as well as thought processes in our day to day life and functionings and they may contribute certain type of intentional activities can contribute to our happiness. Uh, so, this is what research indicates. So, uh, intentional activities we have discussed are of can be of three types, it could be you know behavioral intentional activities, it could be you know cognitive activities like thought processes or attitudes or it could be volitional activities in the sense of pursuit of goals and achieving goals. And we have also discussed that you know if these intentional activities are we are less likely to get adapted to intentional intentional activities primarily because of two important reasons. One is obviously intentional activities are episodic. You know we don't do it all the time. And uh, second is you know we can vary intentional activities. We can change them uh, because it is we who you know consciously or choose to engage in th with them. So, uh, because of these characteristics, we can change them, bury them and they are not constantly all the time. So, we are less likely to get adapted to them. So, this is how it is, it has mo much more advantage than you know in terms of life circumstances. Uh, we have also discussed positive activity model or intervention, where we have discussed positive activities specifically, we mean specific intentional activities which enhances uh, our happiness level. 
research shows certain activities such as you know practicing gratitude, you know act, acts of kindness, using signature strengths, affirming one's values, meditation, mindfulness. These are some of the positive activities at least research indicates that they enhances or contributes to our sustainable increase in uh, happiness level. And uh, research generally shows the mechanism by which they influence our well-being and happiness is that you know these positive activities you know of uh, the uh, they kind of stimulate positive emotions, thoughts and behaviors which in turn increases our happiness and well-being. Uh, we have also discussed you know certain factors which kind of uh, uh, influences the success of positive activities. It is not that all positive activities will have equal impact on our happiness and well-being. Uh, certain factors may influence the success or uh, success of those positive activities you know such as you know characteristics of the activity itself so what is the frequency uh, of use of that activity so how many times you are you know uh, kind of practicing them uh, whether you are varying it or you are just monotonously doing one type of activity so these factors will influence we have discussed the details of all these things uh, then the characteristics of the person such as you know a motivation level of the person his belief systems his uh, you know uh, personality traits uh, his efforts all this will influence uh, whether this activity will lead to enhancement in happiness or not then we have discussed person activity fitness certain activities may be more suitable for one person and it may not be suitable for other type of person so uh, so whether this activity is suitable for your mindset that will also determine whether that activity will be helpful for you or not. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last module and today is uh, in the module number 9 and 10 uh, the upcoming module we will be focusing on specific intentional activities or positive activities uh, which research shows has a lot of potential in terms of increasing uh, our happiness level sustainably. So, from today we will talk about specific activities in the last module we were discussing in general uh, broadly about intentional activities. So, in the today's lecture we will uh, focus on or emphasize on cultivating happiness with gratitude or practicing get it gratitude. So, in that context we will discuss uh, certain key concepts in today's lecture, uh, the we will discuss what is the meaning of gratitude, we will discuss how gratitude is connected to happiness, and then we will discuss certain exercises that we can do in terms of cultivating gratitude and at the end we will discuss uh, certain obstacles in promoting or practicing gratitude. So, let us see uh, one by one all these concepts. So, what is the meaning of gratitude? So, gratitude is basically you know derived from a Latin word uh, which basic called gratia which basically means grace or gratefulness. So, generally when we use the word gratitude we generally mean you know uh, we are grateful for something. So, that is the idea of gratitude. So, it means grace or gratefulness the basic meaning of the word. However, gratitude the idea or the concept of gratitude has been uh, you know, defined in varieties of ways in the literature you know uh, depending on the context in which it is used. For example, you know people uh, have conceptualized gratitude as a kind of moral virtue uh, many people look look at gratitude as a kind of moral virtue as it is given a lot of emphasis in various spiritual and religious tradition it's an important virtue that one can cultivate so it is looked at as a moral virtue also uh, many people look at it as an attitude it is a kind of attitude or outlook that you uh, you know uh, have towards people or the life in general what is your attitude towards the things that happens around you. Uh, so, that attitude gratitude is a more kind of you know, uh, st state of attitude or certain kind of attitude that you uh, take which is which which has certain you know, um, you know element of gratefulness and thankfulness. Uh, many also uh, define attitude as an emotion particularly it is considered as a positive emotion. So, because uh, gratitude and positive emotions are very strongly connected to each other. So, many people look gratitude as a kind of positive emotion or it is a it is a positive emotion they consider it. Uh, many people also think it as a kind of habit means some people are habitually more grateful than others. So, habit it is also connected to the concept of personality trait. So, when we say something as personality trait it is 
a characteristic which is ingrained within that person. So, it is a characteristics of his personality, his individuality, you know, it is more like he is most of the time uh, one person is showing gratefulness. So, it could be a type of personality trait, some people consider it also and some people consider it in the context of coping response. So, gratitude could be used as a coping response at the time of adversity. So, it has been conceptualized in diverse ways as it is clear, uh, but the basic idea is same that is this, it is a kind of state of you know gratefulness or thankfulness depending on the context it could be conceptualized you know uh, uh, whether it is a trait, whether it is a attitude, whether it is a kind of virtue, it could be combination of all these things. Uh, some other definition let us look at it. Uh, gratitude is also kind of you know people consider it as a kind of acknowledgement that we have received something of value from others. So, gratitude kind of includes that you acknowledge or you well you know kind of that you know there is a sense of acknowledgement or openness that comes from within you when you receive something valuable or important from maybe some other individual or maybe from the life in general. So, it arises from a posture of openness to others where you are able to gladly recognize their benevolence. So, one thing is that obviously, you, you kind of acknowledge the importance of what you have received, you give value to it and uh, basically uh, there is a sense of openness you know and you recognize that uh, whatever the importance of whatever you have received. So, these are some of uh, uh, it is also another way of defining it. A broader more context free definition when we say context free definition basically means because the earlier definition was because in the context of kind of somebody has given something to you. So, there was a context of interaction a more context free definition can also be given you know some uh, researcher also defined uh, you know gratitude in a context free uh, way for example gratitude is the appreciation of what is valuable and meaningful to oneself and represents a general state of thankfulness and appreciation so uh, basically in that context gratitude gratitude includes uh, two important aspect one is you know, state of thankfulness or appreciation and second is you are thankful or you appreciate what? What is valuable and meaningful So, these two important aspects are there in this definition, one is obviously you become there is a state of mind which is thankful and appreciative for what you have received uh, in terms of and you value those whatever gifts that you have got, it is valuable and meaningful to you. So, this uh, gift or whatever you know uh, appreciation uh, that you are giving it may come from another person or it could come from life in general. So, one could be grateful uh, you know to the existence itself, it one could be grateful to the God or some higher power or one could be grateful to certain individuals because they have contributed or given you some important gifts or whatever it is or some uh, you know made some contribution to your life for which you are thankful and appreciative. So, the basic idea of gratitude is basically when you become uh, this is a state of thankfulness you thank people, you thank existent, you thank God whatever it is. So, that state is called uh, uh, the tr or basically uh, we mean gratitude when we say uh, basically we, we, we basically become thankful when we are in a state of gratitude. So, this is uh, the basic idea of gratitude. So, there are different definitions, but the basic idea is same context may differ. Now, people may feel grateful uh, you know 
in uh, you know varieties of ways or for varieties of reason so one may feel grateful by many ways for example you know noticing how fortunate one's life circumstances are so you can become grateful by reflecting on your life circumstances when you see that your life circumstances are actually you know you are so fortunate to get whatever life circumstances you got because it could have been worse there are people who are in a much worse situation than you so naturally a sense of gratitude may arise if you reflect on your life circumstances it may arise by another way it could be by thanking someone who has contributed in your life gratitude may also come if when you feel thankful to other people whoever has whoever has contributed something to your life so you feel grateful and you become open open to their gift whatever you have received from them so you express your gratitude or thankfulness uh, one may become grateful also by uh, recalling good things in one's life some simply because you know many good things might have happened in your life so if you recall those good things one may experience gratitude that you know so many good things good memories are there of my life of or maybe certain events that has happened uh, and by remembering them recalling them you may experience gratitude so practicing of gratitude involves focus in the present moment on appreciating your life as it is today and what has made it so so generally when you experience gratitude you are generally in the present moment and you are appreciating certain aspect of your life or your life in general and whatever has contributed to that present life circumstances so basically in gratitude people acknowledge you know goodness in their lives by becoming grateful so basically in a very simple sense the nut in nutshell we can say uh, you know people kind of acknowledge whatever goodness is there in their life by becoming grateful so whenever they are grateful they acknowledge some aspect of goodness in their life so uh, basically uh, our human mind is more habituated towards you know things for which we generally you know find reasons to complain our mind naturally flows in the complaining aspects of our life so if something goes wrong generally our mind whole attention goes there and we have seen why what is the reason behind it negative things catches our attention our whole energy and focus goes there for evolutionary reason we have already discussed all this aspect so generally our mind kind of naturally flows towards things for which we find reasons to complain so that is why you know we need to cultivate gratitude so gratitude generally may not happen very spontaneously that is why there is a need to cultivate it so we need to shift our attention from constant complaining attitude to attitude of thankfulness so that is why there is a need for effort and that is why most of the intentional activities need some effort if you want to change your life experiences in the positive direction you need to shift your attitude and it needs some effort because mind generally flows spontaneously in other direction you need to push it back to and reflect consciously on the dimensions which are more positive in that sense and to be grateful to certain aspects of all, of your life so it's a conscious effortful activity now let us see the connections so the relationship or the research findings between gratitude and happiness or well being so uh, many research indicates that gratitude is foundational to well being and health throughout our life span so it is one of the foundational characteristics of our health and happiness and well being you know because uh, this is a basic attitude that is connected to many positive things and which may promote so many positive ideas or pro for positive behaviors and thought processes so we'll see some of these things so because it is connected to many other dimensions of positive thoughts and behavior it is considered as one of the foundational aspect of our well being and health Uh, research indicates you know gratitude uh, contributes to diverse indicators of well being so there can be many indicators of well being we have already discussed all these indicators for example a research shows gratitude increases you know positive effect effect basically means emotion positive effect it decreases negative effect so 
anything that increases positive emotion naturally it, it will decrease your negative emotions also. Uh, gratitude is uh, research shows gratitude is negatively associated with depression, anxiety, loneliness, envy or neuroticism. So, so, these are the characteristics which are mostly related to negative emotions and gratitude is negatively correlated to these things. So, that means, uh, higher the gratitude lesser will be these characteristics. So, that is the meaning of negative correlation if one increases other decreases. A research also indicates that uh, uh, gratitude is positively associated with pro-social traits such as empathy, forgiveness and willingness to help others. So, research also indicates that people who are more you know, grateful in their characteristics, uh, they also you know display pro-social characteristics. Pro-social basically means you know characteristics which uh, or, or any acts that kind of you know benefits or helpful to other people. So, pro-social. So, basically means pro social towards social something that benefits society or other people. So, we have another term called antisocial which is just opposite to that. Any acts that is against society or other people that harms society or other people. So, all the criminal activities are kind of antisocial activities you know because it harms society in general and individuals also. So, pro-social behavior means behaviors that you know promotes well-being for others as well as, as or individuals or society in, in at large. So, we will see what are the possible you know mechanisms also. So, overall uh, social well-being. Research also indicates that you know uh, gratitude uh, overall improves well-being including fewer health complaints and more positive outlook towards life. So, it is clear gratitude uh, uh, the, the practice of gratitude or the characteristics of gratitude or trait of gratitude you know can directly influence or increase your happiness uh, and well being and or indirectly by you know promoting certain other characteristics which are associated with well being or happiness. So, research is very clear in that context. Now, let us see uh, what are the mechanisms, why gratitude uh, promotes all these important positive qualities, what could be the possible you know mechanisms behind it. So, uh, Imons and Mishra in 2011 they provided you know some of the important mechani possible mechanisms uh, that are uh, shown in research uh, that can facilitate uh, you know well being and happiness you know and uh, basically uh, factors that are connected to gratitude which may in turn uh, lead to promotion of happiness or well-being. So, one reason first reason is that you know gratitude facilitates coping with stress. So, cope as we have already seen coping with stress or adversities or life crisis is very important you know aspect of your well-being. So, if you are not able to cope properly or in a healthy way. Uh, we may go into various uh, the you know we may also have you know, various kinds of psychological disorders and other kinds of problems. So, lack of coping or inability to cope effectively is associated with various psychological issues, emotional issues. We have already seen all these things. So, if something can facilitate proper healthy coping, it will be it will promote well being naturally. So, gratitude is one such characteristics which can facilitate coping with the stress. How it can do? The research shows gratitude promotes healthy and adaptive coping style and strategies such as seeking uh, social support, positive reframing, approach oriented problem solving and active coping. So, generally research shows uh, expression of gratitude or people with the trait of gratitude, they generally uh, at the face of crisis or stress, they generally get involved in various adaptive coping strategies. Why this can happen? For example, you know they are more likely to seek social support. They show more positive reframing or positive thought processes or outlooks towards the life situations. They are more likely to actively involve and solve the problem. So, that is called as an active coping. It is simply because it is associated with the uh, the uh, the general trait of 
gratitude. So, people who are generally, you know, more grateful. Uh, so, that kinds of, you know, helps you to open up and be in a positive state where you see also the positive aspects of your life. Whatever is happening at the time of crisis, uh, you are not too much, obviously, initially after a stress or traumatic event, one can be highly, you know, engrossed in the overwhelming negative emotions. But if you slowly develop or cultivate traits of attitude, you will also look into other aspects of your life where you can be kind of find reasons to be grateful. So, that kinds of opens up at or shifts your mind to certain positive dimensions of your experiences, which helps and promotes all this adaptive coping. Uh, research also shows that you know uh, gratitude is associated with post traumatic growth. We have already had two lectures on post traumatic growth. So, the idea of post traumatic growth is that after traumatic experiences, many people report certain positive psychological changes within them uh, because of struggling with you know uh, crisis of life. And gratitude is one thing that promotes post traumatic growth. Why it can promote? Simply because post traumatic to in order to in order for post traumatic growth to happen while dealing or struggling with crisis of life or adversities of life, slowly, slowly you need to come out of it and adapt uh, you know, in a very constructive way. And for that, this attitude of gratitude is very important because you see positive aspects of your, of your life and gratitude kind of promotes that outlook. Uh, so, in that sense, it can promote post-traumatic growth. So, obviously, you know, you slowly, slowly disengage from the older, older crisis and you know, situations which we are creating a lot of you know negative emotions and you also start looking at you know things for which you know uh, still you can be grateful for so that shift in attention also plays very important role in terms of promoting post traumatic growth the second mechanism uh, that research shows is that you know gratitude reduces toxic emotions resulting from self and social comparison So, obviously, uh, one thing is uh, very clear, you know, whenever we feel grateful, uh, generally, you know, uh, we are less likely to experience negative emotions and also we are less likely to do social comparison or upward social comparison. Uh, specifically, what happens in the upward social comparison, we will talk about social comparison in the, in this module itself, in the third lecture. So, what happens in upward social comparison is that you compare with somebody who is more, uh, you know, fortunate in certain aspects. So, it could be in terms of money, it could be in terms of skills, it could be in terms of abilities, somebody who is higher than you in certain traits or certain characteristics. When you compare with them, generally, you know, we, we experience ourselves in the lesser position and it may stimulate many negative emotions and primarily, especially when it, it is governed by envy. Uh, we are likely to experience more negative emotions. So, what happens, you know, gratitude is just opposite to that, you know, whenever you experience gratitude, you are less likely to compare or especially the upward social comparison is going to decrease because we are grateful means you are thankful for whatever you have. So, you will not keep on clinging or comparing yourself to others too much uh, and as a result, you are less likely to experience negative emotions and its associated mental states such as envy and resentment. So, they will decrease automatically. Envy and resentment primarily comes from complaining attitude when you do not see you are not satisfied with your present circumstances, you are not satisfied with your own self. In that sense, you know, when you compare yourself with others and whenever you see somebody is better than you, this sense of envy and resentment uh, may come into play. So, Gratitude decreases upward social comparison, which may result in envy and resentment. So, all these things will decrease uh, when you have, when you cultivate gratitude. So, generally gratitude is incompatible to toxic emotions such as envy and resentment. So, by definition, you cannot be grateful when you are very envious and resentful. You cannot be grateful, you know, because you are having so much envy towards somebody. How can you grateful, be grateful to someone? At the same time, you you are so envious. So this these are incompatible to each other. So this is one mechanism. It promotes you know uh, 
at least it reduces upward social comparison, it's typically you know guided by uh, envy and resentment. The third mechanism uh, is that sense of gratitude reduces too much or excessive materialistic striving, uh, which is also uh, you know not good for our well-being or happiness. Excessive striving. Uh, can make us very miserable and sad and you know it may decrease our well-being. We have seen some of this research finding. Uh, so, gratitude by definition uh, you know uh, uh, it, it, it you when you cultivate sense of gratitude, uh, this excessive striving for materialism will decrease you know. So, that is why it is one of this is, this is also considered as a kind of spiritual virtue also in that sense. Uh, simply because you know when you kind of you know express or try to look at things for to be more grateful you don't become excessively mad in kind of collecting things or materialistic striving uh, so that also kinds of reduces so gratitude is incompatible to excessive materialistic striving therefore it promotes well being by reducing materialistic striving so in that sense it could be one of the way Fourth is gratitude improves self esteem. Self esteem basically means your sense of self worthiness. How do you judge yourself? So, that outcome of that judgment is your self esteem. Some people may have higher self esteem, some people may have lower self esteem. So, generally, people who have very low self esteem means they judge themselves in a very negative way, uh, they always find themselves inadequate, uh, they always criticize themselves. So, low self esteem may exp uh, express itself in so many ways. High self esteem in the sense we are talking about more stable healthy self esteem. Uh, you have a generally positive sense of self worthiness. Uh, you may have lot may, many you know things to improve upon that is ok, but you accept yourself and see yourself in a positive light. And this is very important to properly functions and for your well-being uh, because if you have very low self-esteem uh, you will uh, have a lot of negative emotions you are will be very unstable and always full of self-criticism and uh, which will lead to various negative emotions and emotional disturbances so healthy uh, self-esteem is very important and gratitude promotes that uh, simply because uh, research shows gratitude has been consistently linked with higher and stable self esteem. So, people with gratitude they or traits of gratitude they are generally have a very stable self esteem you know and that could be one reason why they do not compare themselves too much with others. If you have a very stable self esteem uh, you are kind of happy the way you are you will do try to improve whatever is needed, but you will not be constantly kind of you know comparing yourself with others and becoming unstable all the time. Uh, so, the direction of relationship is not very clear, it is possible the relation could be in other way around also. For example, people with uh, stable or high self esteem uh, may experience more gratitude or gratitude may lead to higher self esteem, both can be possible. So, it could be bidirectional relationship. The fifth mechanism is gratitude enhances accessibility to positive memories. So, gratitude is immediately generally one uh, direct impact of gratitude is that it promotes positive emotions and access to positive memories. So, it, it you can directly very clearly now find out the impact of gratitude if you just close your eyes and think about th some things for which you are grateful. We will we'll discuss some of the exercises. If you just close your eyes and think about for things for which you are grateful in your life, immediately you will feel experience positive emotions. You will feel good about yourself. Uh, you will have some pleasant emotions. You will have some pleasant memories of life. It will immediately stimulate that. So, gratitude facilitates the retrieval of positive experiences because to become gratitude, you need to ex kind of retrieve those memories which are positive by increasing elaboration of positive information. Therefore, it boosts to well being by enhancing positive memories and experiences. The sixth important function of gratitude is, is that you know it builds social resources. 
So, generally research shows that gratitude promotes well-being by building social relations and resources. Uh, people who show more gratitude, they have better relationships with other people. It is very natural because, you know, uh, people who keep on complaining and people who are very judgmental, you know, generally we do not like to be in the company of such people who are complaining and all the time judging people. We do not, people generally do not feel comfortable in their presence and their company. Uh, and the people who are very grateful, generally they show a lot of gratefulness and positive emotions. Uh, they have a better relationships and people like to be in their company and uh, they will have less conflicts in their relationships. Uh, so, it strengthens and maintains existing relationships. Uh, it uh, promotes many characteristics that also build social resources such as you know, it may lead to extroversion, agreeableness, empathy, social stability or emotional stability, forgiveness, trust and generosity. So, all these characteristics will also be kind of side effects of gratitude, which are very important for maintaining positive relationships. So, uh, research also shows gratitude is, is a strength of character that is highly desired in romantic partners or in the context of romantic relationship. Uh, gratitude plays very important role in terms of fulfilling relationships, not just romantic for all kinds of relationship. So, one thing is there, there will be less conflicts, uh, they will have more positive emotions, so that will build and uh, make relationship much more stronger. Uh, so, in that sense it will increase uh, or build social resources by enhancing your social network, by strengthening the existing relationships. Uh, the seventh characteristics or mechanism by which gratitude promotes well-being is that it motivates moral or pro-social behavior. So, uh, moral basically you know the moral dimensions of we have already discussed you know gratitude itself is considered as a moral virtue in various religious and spiritual tradition. So, uh, it may promote pro-social behavior, pro-social behavior as we have already discussed you know behaviors that leads to helping behaviors towards other. So, you are more likely to help other people. So, it may facilitate social bonding as we have seen and facilitate pro-social behavior. It may promote both direct reciprocal altruism. So, for example, generally uh, when somebody helps you, you become grateful if you have that characteristics, if you see the value of that help, you will become grateful to that persons. And so, naturally in the future whenever an occasion arise, uh, you also try to reciprocate that help to other person. Naturally, if you see the value of help of a person, naturally you will feel or you will have a tendency to help the same person who has given some help uh, in, in the past. So, that is called as you know direct reciprocal altruism. So, you are in the future occasions you are directly helping the person who has helped you. So, you are kind of returning a favor. It may also promote kind of uh, upstream reciprocity which basically means uh, so because when you see the value of gifts or support from other people or life in general or if you value whatever you, you got in your life and you are thankful for that, you are more likely to help other people in general. So, not just people who has directly helped you, but people whoever need some sub support and if you are capable of helping that you are like more likely to help them. So, upstream uh, reciprocity basically involves passing on a benefit because you got lot of benefit from other people and you value that. So, you are also more likely to pass on a benefit to an other person who are uninvolved in the initial exchange thus promoting pro-social behavior. So, other people who may not have directly contributed to your life. So, it can do both direct reciprocal altruism as well as upstream reciprocity. So, altruism is another term uh, which is also uh, used in the context very technically used in the context of helping uh, other people without really expecting any return. So, basically pro-social behavior is also a term that is used, but altruism is also used for helping behavior, but it is more technically used in the context where you help somebody without really expecting any return from them. So, it is a true kind of helping behavior. And the eighth characteristics or mechanism that research shows that you know, grateful people may be more spiritually minded. Uh, when we talk about spirituality, we are basically talking about 
in a more subjective search for meaning and more deeper dimensions of human life. So, spiritual search may be very uh, subjective and it may be more individual search for meaning in life, it could be you know search for more hidden or more inner dimensions of life, more higher dimensions of life in whatever way you try to explain. So, it is more spiritual, uh, spiritual journey is more individualistic, more, more subjective you know individual uh, exploration. Uh, religion is more collective societal you know uh, exploration of certain you know uh, matters and, uh, and that it may include uh, you know rituals etcetera. So, in that sense spirituality is different from religion, religion is more collectivist, more organizational, uh, spirituality is more individual, more subjective. Uh, so, gratefulness or gratitude may be connected to spirituality because a lot of religious and spiritual tradition gives a lot of importance to the trait of gratefulness and people it and it is an important part of various spiritual and religious tradition to cultivate you know gratitude uh, because this is very important for making a foundational happy mindset you know in order to look at the positive aspect of your life. Uh, so, it can be again bi directional in the sense spiritual minded people may be grateful or gratefulness and may promote spirituality, it could be both ways. And most of the religious and spiritual tradition consider gratitude as a major virtue to be cultivated. Therefore, a spirituality or religiosity may promote gratitude. So, uh, we have discussed various mechanisms. Uh, so, just I will just show you in a diagram whatever we have discussed just to summarize it. So, uh, if you look at So, gratitude may lead to various things which we have discussed now. For example, it may lead to coping with coping with stress, it may promote or help in coping with stress, it may reduce upward social comparison. It may enhance self esteem, it may increase positive emotions, it may build social resources. it may motivate moral pro social behavior so it may lead to all these characteristics and which in turn leads to higher well being or happiness. So, this could be uh, some of the possible mechanisms by which gratitude promotes well being or happiness. So, these are important in between factors that may kind of lead to well being or happiness. So, let us see uh, how can we do a gratitude exercise as we have now said so many good things about gratitude how to actually do it, how can we do this exercise. So, as we have said that this is more like a positive you know intentional activity where you need to put some effort. So, it may not happen very automatically for some people they may be naturally or spontaneously more uh, you know uh, more likely to express gratitude, but for most people it may not be a natural characteristic. 
So, then we need to kind of cultivate it. So, in that sense, we need to do some exercise. So, Leibomirsky in 2007 suggested some of the important pointers or ways by which you can do this exercise. One way of cultivating uh, gratitude is keeping a gratitude journal. Journal basically means a kind of diary or written record. So, with this exercise, we remind ourselves of the things for which we are grateful, uh, such as you know, gifts, grace, benefits, loved one, etcetera. More specifically, this can be done by writing about it. So, you can write about or find some time and write about for the things for which you are grateful in your life. So, this is the meaning of keeping a gratitude journal or kind of maintaining a diary where you occasionally sit and reflect on the positive things of your life uh, for which you are grateful. How can this be done in a more uh, structured way? One is a choose a time in a day when you have free some free time or free from distraction. Whenever you know you find some time where you know you feel in that mood uh, or free from other distractions. So, it could be uh, the first thing of the day in the morning or could be last things of the day at night or sometime in between during commuting or something. Whenever you get some time, you can sit and reflect on the things. So, you can reflect on 3 to 5 things for which you are currently grateful. Currently, it is always better to reflect on current situation. Uh, it could be 3 to 5 things, whatever you know you feel comfortable. It could be from mundane, for example, you know some electric appliances of your home got fixed. You can be you know experience or express gratefulness for that also. It could be starting from such a mundane thing also. And it could be some magnificent things such as spiritual insight, some revolution that you got. So, it could range from very mundane to very you know magnificent things, whatever is there in your life. In order to uh, write or journal, uh, write for doing this exercise, writing exercise, you may focus on some skills or abilities that you have. So, you should be, you can be grateful for the skills or some abilities that you have. It could be your intellectual ability in terms of the ability to think and analyze things. It could be some abilities, whatever it is. It could be some linguistic ability, it could be some whatever, no, ability in sports, music, whatever it is. These are gifts that you got in your, you know, maybe by birth or after practicing, whatever it is. So, you can focus on those skills and abilities. You can focus on opportunities life has given to you. Everybody, nobody is all, all the time, you know, is in the disadvantage situation. People, everybody gets some opportunities in their life for which they should be grateful or they can be grateful. So, you can reflect on those opportunities that life has given to you or you can focus on various goals that you have achieved. The various goals and targets that have you have achieved, you should be grateful for that. You may also reflect on good relationships and caring people in your life who has contributed and sacrificed for you. We all have many loving people around us who contribute very strong way in our life. It could be family, friends, whatever. You can reflect on that also, that you are grateful for having such good people around you who supported you, contributed you in your life. So, these are the things that you can kind of pointers for which on which you can reflect on while doing this exercise or writing about you know, or you know, writing this journal of gratitude. This exercise can be done once in a day, twice or twice or once in a week or twice in a month depending on the lifestyles and personal preference. So, it depends on your lifestyle and personal preference and mood. Accordingly, that, that sometimes it is good to reflect on these things. It helps you to come out of or uh, from the negative loop of life. At least it will shift your focus, shift your emotions in the positive direction. So, so this is one way of expressing or doing gratitude. Second way of doing exercise of gratitude is expressing gratitude directly to others. So, you can directly in the second way is rather than writing about it, you can directly express gratitude especially for people whom you are grateful for their contribution in your life. So, expressing gratitude is one of the best and most effective when done directly to the concerned person such as writing letters by phone or face to face. You can text them, 
call them or directly face to face meet them and tell them that you know thank them for whatever contribution they have done. For example, Seligman and his colleagues uh, did a research in this direction in 2005 where they had uh, two conditions or two types of participants, two groups of participants. In condition one, the participants were given one week to write and then hand deliver a letter of gratitude to someone who had been specially kind and caring to them, but whom they ne had never properly thanked. So, they, they, they are given a time for one week where they need to write one gratitude letter for people who had contributed in a positive way in their life, but they have not properly thanked them. So, write a letter and hand deliver to them. So, this is one condition participant were asked to do this task. In another condition uh, participants were given some other self guided happiness exercise. They found after that intervention they found you know the largest increase in happiness was gratitude visit participant those who really wrote gratitude letters and hand delivered to the persons their increase in happiness was much more than second condition where they did some other exercises. Another important thing is that while doing this exercise one need to keep it fresh and the, the strategy should be kind of keep it fresh and varied to make it to keep it more, more motivated so that you can do it more. So, even uh, such activities one can become adapted and become maybe you know one can be bored out of it because of hedonic adaptation if you make it very monotonous kind of thing. So, one can include a uh, variety to keep the strategy fresh for example, you know uh, Leibomirsky suggested uh, sometimes one may vary the gratitude practice in a number of ways, express gratitude only after a particular trigger. For example, you know after enduring hardship when one when you were most needful of a boost, especially after difficulties in life or certain stressful life circumstances, one can find time and do some you know gratitude exercise because at that time you need it most because you are engrossed by negative emotions at that time. So, after enduring some hardship and uh, you know uh, one can do after such uh, this kind of triggers one can do such gratitude exercise. Uh, you can uh, vary the exercise by choosing to write in a journal some week, talk to a friend other week and express gratitude through art or in creative ways. If you have certain creative skills, you can express your gratitude in a creative ways also like painting, music, etcetera. So, so varieties of strategies can be done and it keeps it fresh and more motivate you know more uh, varied. So, it you are more kind of you know uh, motivated to pursue those activities. So, uh, Leibomirsky said you know uh, when strategy loses its freshness or meaningfulness, do not hesitate to make a change in how, when and how often you express yourself. So, all these things can be changed and varied depending on the situation, your lifestyle, your mood, whatever. So, you can keep the strategy fresh by you know, uh, using all these trig uh, all these you know pointers. Now, research also shows that there can be obstacles in promoting gratitude. Uh, there are some obstacles. What are those obstacles? So, all people may not experience gratitude in same amount and some individual may be more responsive to gratitude exercise than others. So, certain individual characteristics may also you know uh, influence whether one will be able to do this such exercises or not. Some people are more likely to get benefit out of it. Some people uh, because of certain characteristics uh, may find it difficult. So, let us see so what are those factors. One thing is that cultural background may influence. Second is various attitudinal factors or factors related to our mind may kind of create obstacles or, or influence the outcome of gratitude exercise. Uh, let us see what are these. Culture, so cultural background, one study found that you know gratitude interventions focusing on family and others to be more effective in collectivist samples. Whereas, those focusing on oneself were more effective with individualistic samples. So, generally uh, uh, those who are aware with the um, research on cultures or characteristics of culture, 
you know, mostly people you know divide cultures into two broad categories one is individualistic culture and one is you know collectivist culture so collectivist cultures basically people in the collectivist culture basically they emphasize uh, needs and goals of groups and communities uh, over their individual needs so the focus is more on groups uh, group need and you know uh, goals of the uh, need people give more importance to uh, you know uh, the goals and needs of the group as compared to their own individual needs so uh, in the collectivist culture uh, relationships with others and interconnections with other people plays more important role in their life uh, it plays more central role as compared to individualistic culture where focus is more on their own individual achievement and individual happiness uh, so research shows certain countries like you know japan china korea seems to be more on the collectivist side uh, some research also shows india can is also more towards collectivist culture but some research also says india may not be strictly collectivist it has characteristics of both individualistic as well as collectivist culture uh, some countries are more individualistic like uh, united nations germany australia these are some of the research finding they may be more towards individualistic characteristics or people in those countries are more individualistic in their orientation so uh, th that cultural element may play important role what type of what are the elements that should be focused in the gratitude exercise so for uh, collectivist culture focusing on family and others uh, may be more important in terms of cultivating gratitude for uh, people in the individualistic culture uh, may be focusing on their own self own life and goals uh, may play more important role in terms of increasing you know gratitude so more research is needed in that direction it is not still very you know conclusive certain attitudes may uh, act as a barrier for cultivating gratitudes uh, for example which are incompatible certain characteristics the perception of victimhood some people who are who has a very strong sense of victimhood or they have been victimized very constantly or many times or in their childhood for some you know it could be assault it could be some you know traumatic events uh, so for whatever reasons the people who has a lot of you know, victimized for so many negative things for them it may be difficult to sometime ex practice gratitude it is not impossible but it may be difficult because that sense of victimhood may create an obstacle some people who are unable to admit their shortcomings you know there are people who never you know admit their own shortcomings they are always project themselves in a positive light for them also it is difficult to experience gratitude you know then you need to give importance to other person such people are not able to give importance to other person uh, so you are not because when you say i am grateful because you are kind of ex ex accepting that you know you received something from others and you know then uh, you are likely to accept some shortcomings so those personal traits may be a big hindrance people who are full of envy and resentment they cannot be grateful it's very difficult for them when you are constantly envious and resentful for other people how can you be grateful for others because this these are incompatible to each other people who have given over emphasis on materialistic value then again also they cannot be grateful because too much of individual pursuit and gaining things for themselves only uh, gratefulness is difficult you no know, to experience gratefulness will be difficult it is not impossible but obviously you know these are obstacles so they will hinder so it may be necessary to confront these attitudes by individuals on their own for before initiating gratitude focus so this some of the things all these barriers may be there but one can by practicing remove them slowly slowly confronting them and this is how we change our mindset another important factor that can create an obstacle in a practicing gratitude or inculcating gratitude within oneself is personality factors specifically one personality factor which is you know called as narcissism or narcissistic personality uh you, some of you might have heard about this personality called a narcissistic personality sometimes this is also 
used as a narcissistic personality disorder. This can become a disorder also. So, the idea is the people with uh, narcissistic personality, narcissistic Uh, these people have certain traits. For, for example, uh, they have inflated sense of self importance, seek excessive attention. and admiration they lack empathy they have troubled relationship So, these are some of the characteristics. So, these are the people, uh, narcissistic personality are the people who have an inflated sense of self importance, you know. They have a grandiose sense of self importance and they always want to be center of attention. They always seek attention, you know. I am the best and uh, kind of everybody should focus only on me and hear what I say. So, constantly, you know, that sense of self importance and they seek excessive attention and admiration. So, they lack any empathy, they don't have, they are not at all concerned with others concern, you know, they only want their own importance and share of attention and seek attention all the time. So, these people are, these are the some of the characteristics of, uh, you know, narcissistic people. So, this term narcissism actually also has a very interesting uh, mythological aspect. So, in the Greek mythology, there was a person whose name was Narcissus and he was a young, proud young person. Once he sat near a pool of water and suddenly he could see his own image in the water and by seeing his own image, he fell in love with himself. So, this was the story of Narcissus and from that this trait was named called narcissistic personality with the idea that people who are constantly, you know, having sense of self importance and seek attention and admiration. So, these are the people with fragile self esteem little bit of criticism they cannot tolerate and uh, they will uh, become emotionally unstable and aggressive if they hear some criticism. So, they do not they don't have a healthy stable self esteem. So, this is these are reflection of unhealthy uh, and you know kind of unstable insecure kind of you know unstable self esteem and low with a lot of insecurities in their life. So, a uh, lot of egotis, egoistic kind of concern. So, such people with this kind of if kind of tendencies may not be able to experience gratitude because for the gratitude you need to give space to other people, see the importance of contribution of other people. You have to put yourself little bit aside and give value to the gifts of gifts given by the life existence and other people. For that you know there your sense of egoism, egoistic concern has to be put aside. Narcissistic people may not be able to do that. So, for example, uh, you know, in this direction, Bono and Imons 2017, they reported, people with uh, narcissistic tendencies erroneously believe they are deserving of special rights and privileges without assuming reciprocal responsibility. They think they are special people, they need only, you know, kind of uh, admiration from other people and then they personally will not never admire other people. They only feel this is their privilege right. The sense of entitlement combined with insensitivity to the needs of other engenders you know, um, interpersonal exploitation. So, that is why these people, the relationship is very troubled. They cannot make a stable relationship because constant conflicts will be there. They might be reluctant to express gratitude in response to benefactors whose generosity or kindness they summarily dismiss as little more than attempts to curry favor. In short, if one feels entitled to everything, then one is thankful for nothing. So, if they think they are entitled for everything. So, if 
why should I be thankful for anything? Or if somebody contributes, they will just you know, belittle the contribution of others people. It is the characteristics of full of ego. You, know. uh, you cannot think beyond your own self-interest. So, to be grateful means you have to put aside your ego and see the contribution of other people, be open to that. Then only you know grat gratitude can flourish, can flow out within you. So, narcissistic people with those characteristics, there is an inherent personality barrier which can co act as a barrier in terms of promoting you know, uh, gratitude. So, uh, these are some of the ideas uh, about gratitude. So, with this I will end today's lecture. Thank you.